rat mode activated. I don't think I've ever told the story about how I stood on a sea urchin when I was in Croatia. So last year, uh, me and my lovely boyfriend went to Croatia and one of the best holidays I've ever been on. Oh, it was amazing. It doesn't feel real. Like the sea is crystal clear. It's just absolutely gorgeous. It smells of fish though. Absolutely pongs of fish. So if you're uh, in the market for a bit of smelly fish time, then maybe go to Croatia. But just be warned if you don't like that, that's what you're gonna get hit with. I fell in love with it. It's such a gorgeous place and uh, I would like to go again. But I'm not here to talk to you about travel recommendations today. That's for the hairy bikers to do. So we spent our second to last day at the beach. It was the beach we went to um, like when we first got there. It was one of the first things we did and we said we really want to go back to that beach. So we went back, um, laid down our towels. It was a lot busier this time. The first time we went was right after a thunderstorm. So there weren't naturally very many people there. Um, but we got a spot in between the screaming kids and the that man that just kept spitting everywhere. It's just gross. Like, you know you're in a public setting. Why are you spitting in the sea? I have to swim, I have to swim around that. I have to swim around your flob. So we were having a lovely beach day. Um, the sun was just shining. I was getting severely burnt as I do, even though I put factor 50 on. And it was great, you know, dipping in and out of the sea. Um, you know, reading a book on, the, on my towel and just having a fantastic time. And then, we uh we decided to pack up we decided we were going to go home we had a big day ahead of us tomorrow because tomorrow we were going to go to kirko national park um really looking forward to it we knew it was going to be a jam-packed day take note of that going to be on our feet all day foreshadowing so we decided one more dip in the sea and then we'll make a move just one more because we don't know this is probably the last time we're going to go in the sea like on our holiday so let's let's go in the sea so there we were in the Croatian sea, uh, splashing around, having a great time. Summer loving, had me a blast. Summer loving, it happened so fast. So we were just gonna come out of the sea um, and I said, I'm gonna do one more lap. I'm gonna do one more lap. I'm gonna swim out as far as I can and come back. And um, where we were on the beach was quite, we, we had a bad spot. Like the first time we went to that beach, we got a primo spot where the sea was not rocky like the sea in croatia is very like the beaches are very rocky it's not sand and the first time we went uh we got a really good spot and we could just go in the sea and not have to worry about standing on any rocks or anything or like you know hitting our shins on any any rocks or anything but this time because the beach was busier we didn't get a good of a spot and um we were by we were by the rocks like it, even when it was shallow, there was it was a lot of rocks. Like I needed Crocs. I needed Crocs. I wish I like things. I wish I knew before going to Croatia. You need Crocs because it hurts. Like literally every time I walked into the sea, I was going ooh ow ooh ow because like you've got to step on bloody the sharpest rocks you've ever known. By the way, you think the sea would smoothen them out, make them nice little round pebbles? No, they're rock hard and they they hurt. Anyway, so I said I'd do one more lap and then I was going to come out and as I was coming out I found a really big rock and I thought I'm going to stand on it. I'm going to stand on it because that's fun and I, I thought I'm going to wave to my, I'm going to stand on this rock and I'm going to wave to my boyfriend and go ahoy hoy because that's funny and then I went to stand on it and um, I felt something very sharp. Something <laughs> impaled my foot. So I took one step on this rock and felt like 100 tiny needles go into my foot and i thought that's not right i knew it was sea urchin straight away there was a lot of foreshadowing going on throughout the holiday we passed those little plimsoll stands that had like an animated picture of a cartoon stepping on a sea urchin and it would say don't be an idiot get buy these shoes and i was like that sounds like something that's not ever gonna happen to me, so I'm not gonna buy those shoes. The worst feeling was not even the initial impalement, the impaling. It was, oh, it makes me cringe thinking about it. It was the feeling of the water going, like when I'd move my foot, the water going through the spines, like the resistance of the water. It was 
grim so i was just flailing about going oh my god oh my god and then my boyfriend i asked him to look i couldn't look i couldn't look myself because i kind of knew what had happened but i didn't want to see it because i feel like seeing it would make me freak out and i didn't i don't know so he looked and he said yeah you've you've stood on one let's get you out i literally like beached the shore like a walrus dink everyone was looking at me and i think people knew like it was so busy and i think people knew and people were like Ooh, like to be fair if someone stood on a sea urchin near me i would be i'd be staring i'd be nosing so yeah flopped out the sea and i couldn't look i couldn't look at it for the longest time because i thought it was going to freak me out and i I just imagined the the spines being like that long in my foot coming out and really freaked me out um and my boyfriend <laughs> my boyfriend managed to get some of the spines out but the thing was that when he would go to take them out they're so brittle that they just snap and so he would go to take them out and it would just snap off and the remainder of the spine would just be in my foot looking back i wish i had looked because it would have been interesting to see and like now i know everything's you know if i knew everything was going to be all right i would have looked but i thought i mean i thought it was going to die we went on to google and it just said go to the hospital immediately like call 999 you need to you need medical attention urgently you're gonna die they're gonna get infected start writing your will now basically and it freaked us out like we did not know what to do and like i didn't know if i could walk i didn't know i didn't know how bad it was and then i finally got the got the guts to look i finally looked at the um sorry if this is freaky Sorry, keep talking. Yeah, yeah, I am listening. I finally got the guts to look at my foot and it wasn't as bad as I thought, but like, I was so shocked at how many spines there were in my foot. Like I was, I mean, I'll show a picture. This is why I don't leave my house. You say the sea is urchin free, but you won't catch me out. Oh, wow. So yeah, I didn't know if I could walk or anything. And then immediately I'm thinking, we're going to a national park tomorrow. We're doing a full day of walking. I've ruined the holiday. I've ruined it. And then we read on Google that um, it's only crucial and you know if you're infected, if you start feeling dizzy, start feeling faint, um, your, I don't know, your, your heart rate increases. I had none of that. So we knew I was fine. I really didn't want to put weight on my foot. Like I did not know what was going to happen if I put full weight on it. I thought the spines were going to just go deeper into my foot. I didn't know if I should limp. I didn't know. But the kind of uh blessing in disguise is that the spines were so deep in my foot that i could walk and it the, the skin almost cushioned it so like they weren't sticking out there was no pain so after figuring out i could walk we called a taxi and um we got in and uh we told the taxi man that's naturally what you do isn't it he was just like oh shit you need to uh you need to get them vinegar and we were like what what are you talking about? So we stopped off at the convenience store, got a bloody like two litre bottle of vinegar, that's all they had. So walking back to the uh, Airbnb with uh, some vinegar and uh, a new pair of tweezers. And I spent the rest of my day soaking my foot in vinegar. Now there wasn't, they didn't, <laughs> there wasn't a bucket or anything at the Airbnb. There was no, nothing I could submerge my foot in. So we used, um, we used a coffee tray absolutely stunk the airbnb apartment up i mean the host must have been so confused when she uh when she came in after we checked out like why does it smell of fish and chips in here so after a day of soaking my foot in vinegar we tried we finally tried to tweeze them out did they come out no no they didn't because why would they why would it be that easy again they were so deep in my foot that they couldn't be squeezed out, they couldn't be tweezed out. Again, it was a good thing that they were so uh, deep in my foot because I don't think, if, if it was an open wound, I maybe would have gotten an infection, but because they were just like a clean cut straight into my foot, it, I think the risk was fairly low. <coughs> so annoyingly, we just bought like two litres of vinegar for nothing. <laughs> Um, got a nice pair of tweezers though, so you know, gotta be, gotta count the little wins. I was more concerned about 
ruining the last day of holiday like we had we were going to go to Kirka it was going to be a great time like we were really looking forward to it like it was going to be the highlight of the holiday but it was fine I woke up the next day nothing had changed they were still in there they hadn't moved at all it's quite impressive that I managed to do a whole day of walking on my uh sea urchin foot like I must have done like over like 15,000 steps like we would we were walking all day the only time it hurt was if I intentionally like really pressed them but that's just because it's a tiny needle like and I'm pressing it further into my skin that's self-explanatory but and then we finally got home and it was like right I need to book a doctor's appointment I need to get this sorted out because this is uh this could turn into a big problemo I was just conscious if it got infected it could get worse blah 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 so, and I'm going to have a moan about the uh, the bloody system here with the NHS and stuff. Listen, I love the NHS, but my God, could have died. <laughs> Tried so many times to get an appointment. In the end, I had to do a walk-in clinic appointment. An hour, an hour, waiting for an hour at eight o'clock in the morning um, to see someone who literally just looked on Google right in front of me. I just waited an hour to be seen by a medical professional and you've just you've just opened up Chrome and Googled how to get sea urchin spines out. I actually couldn't believe it. <sighs> she had to get a second opinion from someone who said, you're actually better off going to a podiatrist. Um, if you go through the NHS, you're going to be on a waiting list for like seven weeks or like, you know, so something ridiculous. So you're better off going private and going to see a foot specialist um, because the NHS, I mean, it, you're gonna take, it's gonna take ages. And by the time the NHS finally like get around to uh, seeing me or whatever, the, I'll probably be dead because they've been infected. Not to be dramatic, but. So I wasted an hour of my life um, in, at the walking clinic for them just to tell me, yeah, can't do that here, I'm afraid. Take your custom elsewhere. So I booked in with a podiatrist down the road um they're everywhere i thought i was gonna have to go to like i don't know richmond or something like i didn't know but i guess um bunions are uh, are an epidemic among us so i called the podiatrist and i said look i'm not your usual suspect i've got no uh no corns and no um bunions um but i do have sea urchin spines in my foot can you help me and they were so good they were like yeah we can do that it's fine like simple procedure they were, they were like we've never done this before but like we know about feet it'll be fine um so I booked an appointment went to the podiatrist and they were so good to me they were so good like i would go back just to have a chat with them they were so nice it did hurt it it did hurt because he had to essentially cut open my foot where there's no pre-existing wound, might I add, like he literally just had to make an incision, dig in there and get the spine out. And it was very painful. So I sat in the bunion chair and he uh, dissected my foot. No anaesthetic. He said, he did say initially, we might have to use a local anaesthetic. And I said, that's fine. Um, for a higher cost, might I add. No, I'll just, I'll just deal with the pain, thank you. So yeah, it was very painful. It was just like a constant, dull pain with the occasional like yow where it did really hurt and then i started to feel really faint i'm quite awkward so i thought i'm not going to tell them <laughs> i'm not going to tell them that i'm near fainting but then i started to feel myself go a bit and i thought no i've got to tell them because if i flop out this chair they're going to be very concerned i need to give them a heads up if something happened because it felt like something was going to happen i felt like i was going to faint so he was digging around in my foot and i just said i don't i don't feel so well and then he stopped everything he was doing, got me a glass of water. His colleague, bless him, ran to the shop, got me um, a Dr. Pepper and some sweets because he figured, and I thought this was so good of them, um, he figured I was having like a, um, um, what do you call it, like a low? So yeah, they really looked after me. I just can't believe I was gonna faint. I ended up having to have two sessions to get them all out. Um, the first one was just, yeah it was horrible it was so painful nearly fainted the next one was fine didn't take that long it took like 10 minutes to get the rest of them out whereas the first appointment was like 45 minutes which is their max appointment time as well and he didn't get them all out so had one additional um 
appointment and on the second one I was spine free and he got them all out and um, I had little plasters on my feet where he made the incisions and um, I was a brave girl wasn't I? Apparently you can't keep extracted sea urchin spines because it counts as like medical waste. I wanted a souvenir after everything I went through. I just wanted a little something just to remind me. But yeah, there's a little tip. If you ever step on a sea urchin, well, first of all, get some Crocs and it won't happen to you. Um, but if you do step on one, don't queue up at the doctor's for two hours. Go see a podiatrist. It was only like 45 quid for both. So it was 80 quid in total, but he got them all out. And I didn't need anesthetic. I, it was just, did it so quick. So there you go. If it ever happens to you, don't bother with the uh, with the old NH NHSE. But yeah, that's my story about the sea urchin, the sea the dreaded sea urchin. I, I mean, I wonder what he's doing now. Is he still? Did I take all of his spines? Is he? I mean, he's probably grown them back now, to be fair, isn't he? But um, I wonder if he ever thinks about me, the pale British girl that he impaled. Ha! <laughs> Maybe he just pales the impaled. Maybe he pale impales the pale. I'm gonna stop. And so yeah, that's the story um, of when I stepped on a sea gherkin, a sea urchin. So yeah, hope you enjoyed that. Um, I am going to try and make as much time for YouTube as I can, even though I feel like a bit bit of a nonce on here. Like I say, it's a kid's platform, isn't it? Like I'm... I don't belong here. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you again soon. I hope you enjoyed the little story time. And um, yeah, hopefully you'll see me again sometime soon off i go to wag a mummers um with my ratty wet hair it should dry by the time i get there um thanks for watching everyone i'll see you again soon take care look after your mum bye